I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome the New Year 2017. <clears throat> I'd like to do some reflection in the Buddhist way. How do we um, welcome the New Year? Our ability to welcome the New Year is related to how we relate to the passing year. In terms of concept, in terms of conventional truth, 2017 is exactly the same as 2016. And 2016 is exactly the same as 2015. In terms of concept here, <coughs> today being the last day of 2016, we look to 2017 as the new year with excitement. But then how long this excitement lasts depends on how well we relate to the past 12 months. There is often a misunderstanding in the Buddhist community because um, the Buddhist practice very often emphasizes living at the present moment. This means you know, people, people feel guilty if they think about the past, if their mind dwells on the past, if they talk about the issue in the past. They don't give themselves enough time, sufficient attention to deal with all issues. So there are unresolved issues, emotional issue, especially related to the past. With the past, um, with our relationship with, with the past unresolved, it's not possible to embrace the new year in full. And very often people make a new year resolution. In the past, I have done this, I regret this, I'm going to improve this, so I made this resolution. Some people make resolution about their weight. They would like to reduce their weight. Some people say they would like to improve a certain area in their life, in relationship, in social work, in study, in business in a family relationship, etc. That's how people say goodbye to the old year. By recognizing the shortcoming of the old years and make a resolution to improve them in the coming year. I think so far so good. So far so good in the sense that you know we we recognize the shortcoming of the um, the past year, and we are determined to do better in the next twelve months. Um, <clears throat> but still, I want to say that um, if we when we make a resolution, if we only focus on the shortcoming, the negative side, the downside of the past year, and if we don't rejoice, the good time, the good work that we have had in the past years, we will be lacking in joy, in 
um, celebratory mood. We won't be feeling joyful because we don't give enough time to revisit the good thing, the good time, the improvement that we have made in the 2016. So it's important in the Buddhist practice that we revisit the good thing, the good time, the good work that we have had in the past 12 months. And this is not enough just to think about ourselves and to rejoice in our own merit, in our own work. That's not enough because it's very limited. Here, we are talking about human being, being interdependent, being interrelated. We cannot live alone. We live in cities and villages with many people, with different people engaging in different aspects of life. Some people are doctors, nurses, healthcare professionals. They look after patients. Some people are engineers, they build, they construct, they um, <coughs> renovate so that we have a roof on our, he on our head. Uh, places to work safely. And there are people who do farming so that we have something to eat on a daily basis. There are people who look after our security. There are people who look after education, who look after the spiritual uh, needs of the society. So we all need each other. We are interrelated. So to just rejoice in our own um, improvement of the past year is not enough. If we do so, our joy, our joyful feeling will be very limited. So it's important that we extend this joyful exercise, this cele celebration to all members of our family. And this is not easy because during the Christmas time, when many family members meet, often they quarrel. They quarrel over Christmas dinner. Um, <coughs> they quarrel over um, petty issues. Actually, those quarrels, they are triggered by unresolved past emotion. Once again, the importance of managing or relating properly to our past. Once we are able to relate to the success of our family members during the past years, then we still need to extend it to our neighbors, how well they do in terms of health, business, education, profession, and so on. If you have an unhappy neighbor, you're not going to be in peace. You're not going to be at peace, you know, in your own, in your own home. You need your neighbor to be peaceful. And your neighbor also needs you to be peaceful. We are interdependent. What happened in Syria affects the whole world. What happens in Afghanistan affects the whole world. What happens in Colombia, the drug issue, affects the youth in the whole world. We are not um, protected if we live by ourselves. So we need to relate to our neighbors. 
when we say neighbor, we are not just talking about people who live immediately next to us. We are also talking about people who live in the same town and city, in the same country, in the neighboring country, in the neighboring continent. Because their pain and joy affect us and ours affect them. Then when we try to relate to people like that, we are going to see the challenges. Sometimes because we are moody, you know, we are not um, in, in good mood. So we are not able to relate to our neighbors in a good way. So this is about addressing our own mood, our own negative emotion. That may be anger, that may be dis uh, disappointment, that may be uh, jealousy, insecure feeling. Uh, maybe you're disappointed with your neighbors because they behave like this, like that. And some people are um, disappointed with election results in Europe, in America, and other parts of the world. So you need to address your, we need to address our emotion, how we relate to those events. If we, we leave the negative emotional habit, negative emotion, emotion uh, reactional habit, unchecked, unresolved, that's going to ruin the new year 2017, and perhaps 18, 19, and 20 as well. A, it will be a waste of time, a waste of time in our life. As far as the Buddha's teaching is concerned, we look at this, this reaction as a habit, a habit that we can change, a habit that we can transform. So in transforming that, we look at the pain that we go through in trying to relate to the good thing in our own life, in the lives of our neighbors and many people. So we address those negative emotions. In uh, the Buddhist meditation practice, this is called purification of emotion, purification of the mind. When we purify our emotion, when we tame our emotion, using mindfulness, using compassion, whenever there is pain, whenever we are in pain, whenever we are disappointed, whenever we are frustrated, we look at those experiences in a proper way with the right attitude, and we turn them into compassion. So compassion becomes a positive, uh, energy. If you relate to the disappointment of the, 19, the uh, 2016 with compassion, then you are quite ready to welcome 2017. And if you are also relating to the good thing that you have had in your in the 2016. After all, okay, you have lived through the year, 365 days. You have been alive and well. You have gone through this. And trying to think of the good time, the successes, the contribution that you have made to improve your own life, the lives of your family members, your neighbors, the society, and human being. <coughs> if you can 
revisit them and rejoice in them with this joyful feeling. From the passing 2016, you are now welcoming the new year with joyful heart. 2017. So I wish you all a happy, joyful, and successful New Year 2017. Thank you.